My TNA Hard Justice 2009 pay-per-view. Predictions pay-per-view is live exclusively tonight on pay-per-view. And as far as this card for this pay-per-view, other than the two um, X Division matches, this pay-per-view looks like it's going to be complete trash. Nothing on here looks good at all. Another weak main event for TNA, which is the one thing we haven't seen really anything this this year at all as far as a great main event from TNA. You've seen some decent main events from you know the King of the Mountain match, but other than that, you haven't really seen much at all as far as good main events on a TNA pay-per-view. And the one thing that's going to make this at least a, a you know a little bit better than Victor Road are the two X Division matches. The two X Division matches on here, if they're booked as good as what they should be, um, could make this show at least not into you know a good or good show at all but it might you know at least average it out to be an average show overall the uh, first matchup will be the returning of the uh, steel asylum match with suicide versus Chris Saban versus amazing red versus Alex Shelley versus Jay Lethal versus Daniels versus consequences Crete and versus, uh, versus the uh, debuting um, the Pope D'Angelo De Niro, a.k.a. Elijah Burke. Um, now, TNA's website, he is not listed within this match, but apparently on TNA Impact this past Thursday, it was announced that he will be a participant within this match. Now, I do not think they'll have you know Elijah Burke, a.k.a. the Pope D'Angelo De Niro, go over in this match in his debut, but no, in TNA, you can't really take that out of the question. That is a possibility, but I don't see that happening. I see uh, Christopher Daniels, or now just known as Daniels, I see Daniels going over this match and winning the Steel Asylum match, and the winner of the Steel Asylum uh, becomes the number one contender for the X Division Championship, unless, you know, they do something where they have to change the route like they did at, um, it was either Hard, it was either hard Justice, actually I think it was Sacrifice 2008, where um, Kurt Angle was out injured, and they had to, you know, put uh, someone else in the main event. Uh, that e that on that pay per view, or someone was injured on that pay per view. I don't know necessarily know if it was Kurt Angle, it might have been someone else, but might you know have someone from the Steel Asylum go to the main event if uh, Kurt Angle's not going to be able to be in the main event right now. Kurt Angle is still advertising TNA, still saying he's going to participate in the main event. Obviously, everyone knows about the uh, arrest that Kurt Angle got yesterday, um, apparently stalking some uh, TNA female worker, which um, at this point, I don't know if it's necessarily been named who, it's gonna, who, it, who it was, but most people are saying it's uh, probably who Kurt Angle was uh, dating at one point or another in TNA, which is Raka Khan. Um, I don't think it could be anyone else within TNA. Obviously, Karen Angle doesn't have any ties with TNA anymore, so it cannot be her. Um, and he was caught with um, HGH, some pills, and some other things as well, and has and was driving with a suspended license. So with that, TNA might not want to have him in the main event of the pay-per-view. That's going to look pretty bad. Or it won't look too bad having him in the main event, but you're definitely going to probably have to have him lose the title. The next matchup will be the uh, British Invasion versus Beer Money Incorporated for the IWGP uh, Championships, and this this might be a decent tag team match. You know, the thing about Beer uh, not Beer Money Incorporated, but British, British Invasion, just as long as you keep Doug Williams in there the most, um, they're actually you know a solid tag team. And Beer Money Incorporated, they work very good together. Um, I see British Invasion winning this match and retain the IWGP titles just because. I don't see you know TNA changing the IWGP titles two times uh, this quick, and you know obviously uh, New Japan they just finally you know actually um, no, actually um, recognized the title change of British Invasion, defeating Team 3 and becoming the new IWGP champion just recently. Um, so I don't think they would want you know another uh, another title change at this point. Um, so British Invasion will obviously win this match and might be a decent tag match. The next match up will be a match that shouldn't even be on the paper and doesn't really make any sense at all. And this is Hernandez versus Big Rob Terry of the British Invasion for the uh, world title briefcase. Now this doesn't make any sense why the world title briefcase is on the line. Now Hernandez won the uh, world title briefcase and it's in his, in his possessions and even though, you know, Rob Terry or more or less Br Brutus Magnus is the one that actually had the World Top briefcase and stole it from him, but I guess 
they're kind of counting as anyone in the British invasion could, you know, cash it in with it. So that's the reason why Rob Terry's in this match, and it just doesn't make any sense. You know, it's good for you know, a, you know, a storyline, do something like that. You know, have you know a wrestler steal the tag belts or steal, you know, a briefcase or something like this from a wrestler. But it's not like you know the wrestler that steals it actually has possession of it. It just, you know, kind of does something to build on to it. And this whole thing with the briefcase, with the British Invasion having them, has been going on a little too long. And obviously Hernandez will win this match. I'd like to say it's going to be a complete squash, but they won't make it a complete squash because uh, Rob Terry, he's not really a small guy. So you'll see, you know, they'll kind of, you know, have two, you know, big guys in there taking on each other. But Hernandez will come out the victor in this match. Hopefully it doesn't go too long. Then the next matchup will be Abyss versus Jeffro Holiday in the uh, in the Bounty match, which is idiotic. This match, just like the Hernandez matches on pay per view. Um, now, obviously, this pay per view hard justice. All the matches can be cons can be uh, contested under you know hardcore stipulations. There really is you know anything goes in any, any match. There's no disqualification. So. With that, maybe Abyss can make this, you know, a watchable match, but I don't even think we'll get that out of this match. Abyss will win this match, though. Then the next matchup will be for the TNA Knockouts Women's Championship, which is um, Angelina Love versus ODB. Now, ODB is obviously very over with the crowd, but um, I don't don't think they'll have Angelina Love lose the Knockouts title to ODB. Angelina Love will retain it because. Really, TNA made a really bad booking mistake of having Angelina Love lose the title for those 10 days to Tara. Not only did that hurt her credibility as a women's champion for TNA, it obviously hurt Tara as well, only having a 10-day title reign. It should have been a way where, you know, Angelina Love had the title for, you know, a couple months, then Tara defeats her, and then she has a, you know, good title reign. And, and the one thing that I wish this pay-per-view had was, you know, take the Abyss match off, take the Hernandez match off, and why didn't they, you know, put another women's match on here? Put a uh, Sarita, um, aka uh, Sarah Stock versus Cheryl and Melissa, now known as Alicia Alicia Flash, and have them two on a pay per view. Give them, you know, I would like to say 15 minutes, but TNA would never do that on pay per view. So 10 minutes, that would have been a good match, you know, in place of getting rid of those two matches that really are no purpose being on here, and nothing that's going to be, you know, actually pay per view worthy. Of those two matches. Angelina Love and ODB might be a decent match, but not, you know, anything of a spectacular women's match. Angelina Love will go over in this match. Next matchup will be for the TNA World Tag Team Championships, Booker T and Scott Steiner versus Team 3D. And this is just a battle of the uh, old washed-up stars that cannot go anymore at all. Um, Booker T and Scott Steiner will win this match. Um, I don't think anyone cares about this match at all. Then the uh, next matchup will be another match. This might be the, I would say it would be the worst match of the night, but that's probably going to be given to uh, the Abyss versus Jeff Roll Holiday match or the Hernandez and Big Rob Terry match. But this match right here for a title match is probably going to be the worst one. It's either going to be this or the, uh, the Team 3D and Steiner and Booker T match. But this match just doesn't look good at all. And that's the, and that's uh, Mick Foley versus Kevin Nash for the Legends Championship. Another match no one cares about for a title that's meaningless. And the title is nothing more than a prop. Mick Foley will retain the title, I would say, mainly due to the fact that he just recently won it. But, hey, they did the same thing with Kevin Nash at Victory Road. He won it there and then lost on Impact. So... They could, you know, switch it up again and give it back to Kevin Nash, but I don't think they'll do that yet again. I think Mick Foley will retain the uh, Legend Championship and probably a very piss-poor match against Kevin Nash. Then the next matchup, now this match with the Steel Asylum match, probably the two matches that can make this pay-per-view at least better than the Victory Road and at least, you know, an average pay-per-view maybe. And this is uh, Homicide versus uh, Samoa Joe for the X Division Championship. Now, the one thing that's going to have to be, this match is going to have to be booked in a way where Homicide is going to have to actually look credible in there. And this could be a match to, you know, add some credibility into the X Division if Homicide goes over in this match. And I do feel Homicide will go over, but I'm hoping it's not, you know, in some way where, you know, Joe gets distracted and there's some interference or, like, some clusterfuck ending that they do here where 
uh, Homicide wins some way or another, defeating Samoja. I think it's better if you know he beats some actually, you know, cleanly. Even though that's the way he should do, because obviously Homicide more or less is a face within TNA. And Joe, even though he's supposed to be a heel, I would still say he's kind of a tweener within TNA. And just as long as they don't book it in a way where Joe squashes him and is dominant the whole match, then this could be a good match. It has to be booked in a, a pattern where it's back and forth. You can book it in a way where Joe can be dominant a little bit, but not to a level where, you know, Homicide looks like a complete joke being in there in this match. So this match could be a match to add some credibility back into the X Division, and Homicide should go over, and I do feel he will go over in this match. Then the main event you got for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, Sting versus Matt Morgan versus Kurt Angle at this point. Kurt Angle is still in the main event. TNA is still saying he's going to be wrestling tonight, so... With that, um, I would say Kurt Angle, knowing TNA, they would have him retain the championship. But the other thing is, do you really want to have your champion, you know, retain the title after, you know, getting arrested for stalking some female worker within TNA, having uh, prescription pills that obviously those he says he has prescription for is and guy called with HGH. With that, are you actually going to want your wrestler to go over on a pay-per-view, especially since... Uh, at this point, I don't know how many um, outlets have picked the story up. I know uh, TMZ have picked it up, so that's not going to sound good, you know, if you keep your wrestler as world heavyweight champion. You can have him compete on the pay but have him lose. But the thing is, um, Matt Morgan, I don't think Matt Morgan should be given the title. It'd be one thing, you know, it would be a shock. No one will, you know, think Matt Morgan will win the title. Sting, I, if you wanted to, you know, have Sting win it, you know, maybe have Sting win it for a month or two and lose it to someone like AJ Styles at Bound for Glory. But at this point, I would say the title looks like it's going to change just because I don't think, you know, you're going to want you to have your uh, wrestler, you know, that's got arrested for this to retain the championship. And at this point, he's still going to be working on the pay per view. I would think if they would have him lose the title, I think it'd be much better if they just have him not compete on the pay-per-view and maybe have some one maybe from the um, Steel Asylum match instead of giving the number one contendership for the X-Vision Championship, maybe get, you know, a world title shot. Maybe they don't have to actually go over in the title world title match, but it'd be something good to see. Maybe have someone like Shelly or Christopher Daniels, you know, win that match and go on to the main event. And, hell, if you want to, you know, do something even more shocking, have one of them be world heavyweight champion, that would be something great. And um, yeah, that's it for my TNA Hard Justice 2009 pay-per-view predictions. I peace.